All right, good afternoon. Uh, this is normally an update on Monday where we give an update on, uh, on COVID here in the Commonwealth. We're gonna do that in the second half. We're gonna start um, with new information or updated information uh, on this devastating tornado uh, that has um, wrecked, uh, destroyed so many of our communities. Um, our newest uh, estimate on deaths, and these are numbers coming from emergency management. They may differ a little bit from uh, the coroner. There's one of these we're certainly checking on is that we are now up to 74 uh, Kentuckians that we have lost. Um, one additional one in graves since this morning. Um, looks like four uh, additional um in Hopkins, and this is one we are uh, checking right now. I had 14, uh, emergency management came back with 17. I hope that the 14 is right. Um, three additional in Warren County, and one here in Franklin County, uh, where an individual actually coming to work at this very complex that, uh, that we're broadcasting from, um, was pushed off the road in the storm and lost his life. I've tried to reach out to his spouse who, who works for us here in state government, and we are so sorry for their loss. Again, uh, we expect that this death toll will continue to grow. Um, 109 Kentuckians now unaccounted for, but as I look at this broken down by county, it's way more, way more people unaccounted for than this. Uh, 81 of these are in Hopkins County uh, alone, 22 in Warren, it says five in Graves, and that can't be right. There are more people than that um, that we've got to identify and, and find, um, uh, hopefully safe in Graves County. Again, um, and because we have multiple of our towns in rubble, uh, finding uh, the, uh, the numbers are going to move uh, a little bit, and we're going to do the best we can to give you the most accurate information we can. Um, yesterday, we received that major declaration with, from the federal government, the fastest in our history. Um, we are very grateful, and, and uh, we've now asked for additional counties to be added, both for public assistance. These are roads and and, and government buildings and uh, public infrastructure. Uh, that's the public assistance program, as well as individual assistance, people who've lost their homes. The extra counties that we have asked for on public assistance include Boyle, Breckenridge, Bullitt, Casey, Christian, Edmondson, Grayson, Green, Hardin, Hart, Hickman, Livingston, Logan, Lyon, Marion, Monroe, Ohio, Shelby, Spencer, and Todd. Those are the same counties we've asked for the individual assistance as well. That is how widespread uh, the damage from this event is when what I think will be an F4 and F5 tornado touches down and stays on the ground for 200 straight miles in a state with 120 counties. You have this many counties that have damage and this many counties that need help. Our National Guard, um, we have uh, augmented uh, our forces that are that are uh, assisting with recovery, now 448 uh, guardsmen in the field. Um, and of those, at least 95 are doing a fatality search and working in these communities to uh, look for um, missing Kentuckians. And, and their search is one where um, we hope they don't find them. We hope somebody connects to them and they're out there and we just uh, don't know where they are yet. Maybe they don't have self-service. Uh, 55 guardsmen are providing logistics support to the state logistics support area and three National Guard chaplains are providing uh, spiritual help to soldiers and civilians in the affected communities. Uh, the new requests that we're getting or increased requests are for MPs. That's needed help on the law enforcement side and then on the engineering side as well. Uh, FEMA, just to go over a little bit of their response. Their priorities are to support life-saving and life-sustaining action. They're working with uh, 
all of us, every level of government in the declared counties. So two FEMA incident management assistance teams have been working with us since Saturday. They are also sending disaster housing experts to work with our teams in the field where we are hit the hardest. Four urban search and rescue teams, including canine detection search teams in towns that these are cadaver dogs that we never thought that we'd need them in. They're in Mayfield and others to assist in local uh, response. An additional 10-person team is relocating uh, from Frankfurt to Mayfield. An incident support base was established at Fort Campbell to rapidly deploy personnel and supplies, and they include 61 generators, 74,000 meals, 135,000 liters of water, cots, blankets, infant toddler kits, pandemic shelter kits, U.S. Army Corps of Engineers, te temporary power and critical public facility staff are helping as well. Mobile emergency response support personnel is in Kentucky, including two mobile emergency operation vehicles with emergency communication capabilities, um, staging teams, housing inspectors, damage assessment, and volunteer agency liaison staff are staged and ready to deploy. That means real soon. They're going to be walking around in what were neighborhoods talking with families, uh, recording the damage, and working on processing their claim, uh, giving them their claim number. Uh, this is, again, the, the fastest we've ever seen. Eight shelters remain open in Kentucky now. Salvation Army is serving meals and, and providing emotional support. I want to talk just a minute about staying safe while you are cleaning up. As you begin cleaning up, take photos. Make a list of your damaged property. This is going to be really important for claiming public assistance. You need to document everything you possibly can. Survivors who cannot stay in their homes, um, we are taking in uh, two state parks. I will give the update on, on that. Uh, do not touch power lines. These are, these are all things that our people know. Stay safe while you're, while you're cleaning up. Uh, couple additional points for outside donations for things like food, supplies, et cetera. If you're doing that for Graves County, the contact is Graves County Emergency Management. That is 270-727-5114. Uh, volunteer sign up. Do we have the website? There you go. Uh, this is from the Graves County Emergency Management. Um, please, if you want to volunteer, go through here. One of the challenges, and it, it's a wonderful challenge for us to have, is so many people want to help. It's overwhelming um, uh, many of our first responders who need to be out doing other things. This will significantly help. Please be patient. Um, there's a lot of people who, who want to help. Uh, Paducah Police Department has volunteered to accept food and supplies as well to help out Graves County. Their number is 270. 444-8590, uh, physical address, 1400 Broadway, Paducah, Kentucky, 42003. Um, okay, and this one is really important. Again, we are working on verifying the information from the candle factory uh, that right now would only have eight confirmed dead, which is Christmas miracle we, we hope for, but we have to make sure it's accurate. So all of the employees from the Mayfield Consumer Products Candle Factory we need them to go and to check in at His House Ministries Church at 1250 KY303 right there in Mayfield. We just want to see you, make sure you're okay, um, and, uh, and verify that information. I believe the phone number we have now, which was wrong earlier, again, we're just doing the best we can on short notice, is 888-880-8620 if your transportation is uh, is is unavailable. So if you are an employee of that facility, either go to His House Ministries at 1250 KY303 there in Mayfield or call 888-880-8620. That number is solely for these folks. Don't call trying to find out information on it. We need to know these people are alive and safe. Uh, Kentucky State Police continues doing hundreds of welfare checks along with local law enforcement and working with the chief medical officer 
to assist with victim identification. Uh, update from our Cabinet of Health and Family Services. Grace County Senior Center and Western Kentucky Allied Service Building, that's the Community Action Building, have been damaged so extensively, there's no way they can prepare meals for, for seniors. That's how mean um, this weather event was. Uh, but um, also shows how incredible our people are. So we sounded the alarm and within 20 minutes, over 2,300 shelf stable meals were committed. These meals are being transported from senior centers in Breckenridge, Nelson and Fayette counties to 300 homebound seniors in Graves County that are fortunate enough to still have a home by way of community action staff. Further work is underway to secure additional meals. You know, in the midst of this pandemic, we were able to eliminate our uh, our waiting list. Every senior who was hungry, um, we were getting a meal too. And then this comes through and destroys the place that uh, that you prepare them. But others have stepped up, are helping us um, uh, to provide uh, that service. Kentucky State Parks, we are offering minimum two week stays to, to those that uh, don't have a place to call their own at the moment. I want to provide room availability as of 1 p.m. today. Kentucky Dam Village, there are still 30 rooms available uh, for families. Ken Lake State Resort Park, 58 rooms available. And we also have hookup outlets that can be used for washers and dryers. And we will accept donations of those to help people out. And the park will accept donations to help the people that, uh, that they are helping out. Uh, the First Lady in just a little bit is going to have um, some good news with our state parks where we're going to try to lift up the people staying there. Lake Barkley, we are waiting electricity to be restored. When that happens, we'll open up 56 additional rooms. Uh, but even with the lights um, uh, not going, the park hosted a blood drive today. So thank you. Barron River uh, has 30 rooms available. John James has one cottage available. Penny Ryle is full. And that's right near Dawson. So that WPA project is where my grandparents met. And then the Rough River Dam State Resort Park, 47 rooms available. Um, again, families who are in need of emergency uh uh, con uh, housing should contact their local emergency management office to request lodging. But hey, if you show up there and you need help, um, they ought to help you call your local emergency management folks from the park. Um, volunteers are needed at Ken Lake, Kentucky Dam Village, Rough River Dam, and Lake Barkley State Parks. And I know our folks are walk watching. It says walk ins are not accepted. It's not okay. If somebody walks in, call emergency management with them and work through it. Do not turn anybody away at any of our state parks. Let's work to confirm that they need our help. Make sure that they are in a warm place and that they are fed while it's going on. And we're not going um, to not accept people that need help. Uh, many of our agriculture operations reside in Western Kentucky and were impacted by the historic tornadoes that devastated the area. Uh, we're already working uh, with many of them, um, dead livestock, um, major operations, uh, helping to, 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 to remove the carcasses and, and ultimately provide the support that's necessary. To do that, I've created an agriculture working group. The working group will work with my office, the executive branch, and any other entities deemed necessary. We've been in constant communication with the people in this working group the past 48 hours, and we remain dedicated to addressing the needs of so many farmers in that area. Uh, with that, I'm going to turn it over to uh, Michael Dossett uh, for his update, and then we're going to uh, get uplifted by the First Lady. We're going to make sure our kids don't miss out on their Christmas. Thank you, Governor. And again, our hearts and prayers go out to the families of the loved ones lost and those who are still missing. So just a brief update. Um, our power picture improved a bit. Uh, we have at this point 2,600, I'm sorry, 26,500. Uh, they're still out of power. Again, uh, managing expectations. Some of the large transmission towers, and these are the ones that you saw during the ice storm of 2009, these are the massive metal structures that carry the transmission lines have buckled. 
Uh, that will take weeks to months to put back up, but that should not impact the large numbers. So I'll go over very briefly counties with excess over 500 customers outage. Uh, Graves, Callaway, Marshall uh, equal about 14,000. Hopkins, 6,500. Christian, 2,000. Hickman, 1,200. Fulton, uh, 900. Todd, 700. Carlisle, uh, about 700. And uh, Caldwell, about the same 700. So we're moving forward uh, very quickly. You've obviously seen, if you're in the impact area, you've seen many contractors that are over target assisting in the power restoration. Um, if you don't have power, life is not good and we're doing everything we can. Um, we have approximately uh, 96 or 95% of those lines assessed across the state. Again, 29 transmission lines are down and those are the large ones. Um, we have uh, no decrease in numbers for uh, telephone poles and power poles that are down. Uh, it's 8,000 and only three of those large uh, co-ops across the state. Uh, so expect uh, a delay in putting the new poles in. That is uh, a very intense labor. And then they have to string the wires. Uh, so a little update on the water and sewer systems. Uh, currently out of the impact area, uh, most all of the systems are operating and that includes 16. Two of the systems, uh, one in South Hopkins and one in, uh, in Morton's Gap um, are about to come back online. We have provided a generator uh, for that power uh, to power their water system. So that should be fine. Um, James, if you could bring up the one slide, please. Um, and this is uh, a slide that uh, depicts the actual number of tornadoes. So we now have five tornadoes identified. And you'll see the um, uh, confirmed is red, unconfirmed is blue, and the dots happened outside of our state. So the longest track, I believe we're up to an estimated 227 miles. That would uh, be one of the longest in U.S. history, if not the longest. And you can see the track of that. And if you reflect on the counties that the governor read off that were added, we included each and every county that these five tornadoes impacted. Now, a lot of the damage is radar indicated. So when we see radar uh, debris fields, we know that something was hit and it could be only a barn or an outbuilding, or it could have been a, a commercial building or some homes. It could be a small part of a subdivision. So we've included all of those counties. So we uh, we asked for and were uh, and and received a presidential declaration, as the governor indicated. This is not just FEMA leaning forward. This is the fastest in our history, and it normally doesn't occur in other states. So thank you to the president, all the way down to Gracious Check, our regional administrator. They paved the way waiting for the governor's declaration to go up there. It was signed very quickly yesterday. And now we've added on 20 additional counties. Again, I want to manage expectation. The fact that those 20 were sent up to FEMA does not mean we're going to be granted 20. I will tell you in conversations, they're going to assess groups of counties. They can't just turn on um, approval for 20 counties. So it's a process and we will keep you updated on the process. Uh, but these five tornadoes are confirmed by radar. The ones that are unconfirmed, the Weather Service has not finished their survey. And quite frankly, as you've heard the governor state uh, previously, and I'm in belief of this uh, of this construct, this will be one of the large ones. And EF3 is bad. That's 155. But with this type of damage, we basically, uh, and again, you've heard it said many, many times, um, I've been on site and thank you uh, to all the first responders, many of them out there doing their job when the wind was still blowing and debris was flying, rescuing people. The long and the short of it is we don't really know by any stretch of the imag imagination of all the infrastructure damage yet. So that's yet to be determined. Uh, and that's just a brief update of where we're at uh, at 4 p.m. today. Well, in um, news, I wanted to be wrong. I was apparently right. Um, we just confirmed that the Hopkins County 17 deaths is 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 accurate, and that's where we're up to. So that's one miracle we did not get 70 
four lost Kentuckians as of now, and that number is going to grow. So, Brittany, we could use some good news. This weekend, like everyone across our Commonwealth, was devastated to see the destruction in so many of our Western Kentucky communities. These tornadoes would have marked one of the most awful days in our state's history, no matter when they struck. That's even more painful that this tragedy happened just a few weeks before Christmas. Especially during this time of year, we all look forward to being home for the holidays, spending time with those who mean the most to us. Now, many of our families don't have a home to go to, or even worse, they've lost someone they love who made their family whole. As a mom, wife, daughter, and friend, As a mom, wife, daughter, and friend, Brittany can only imagine the pain and grief that Kentuckians are feeling at the moment. She knows so many of you feel the same way and wants to know how you can help make this season a little easier for those that are hurting. We are humbled by the countless individuals, organizations, first responders who sprung into action to deliver emergency supplies and shelter to their neighbors in need. We've already announced the team Western Kentucky Tornado Relief Fund and encouraged everyone to contribute if you're able. Again, you can donate at teamwkyreliefund.ky.gov. <laughs> Get me. To start with, this fund is going to help cover funeral expenses for those we tragically lost in the storm. We are proud to announce that we have now had 44,358 donations, well over $6 million. The Relief Fund is going to help families affected by the tornadoes address some of their most urgent needs, no administrative fees, all of it. It's going to go to those families. Let me keep going. I'm going to try. Okay. okay. On top of that, with Christmas just around the corner, we want to help Western Kentucky parents and guardians, despite this devastation, make the holidays special for their kids. That's why we're launching the Western Kentucky Christmas Toy Drive so people across the state can come together to make this Christmas special for as many babies, kids, and teens as possible who need our love and support more than ever. Here's how it'll work. Starting tomorrow morning, December 14th through Saturday, December 18th, you can drop off new, unwrapped toys, games, books or technology in its original packaging to a number of locations across the state. You can also donate $25 Visa MasterCard gift cards labeled with the dollar amount. We are asking for $25 cards so it will be easier to give a consistent amount to families in need. But we encourage you to buy multiple $25 cards if you are able. These gift cards also give people the opportunity to shop locally when possible and support businesses that were also hurt by the storm. There will be 13 regional Kentucky State Police posts collecting donations, as well as local police stations in Independence, Lexington, Louisville, and Paducah. Broadbent Arena in Louisville will also be collecting donations and will be the hub for anyone who wishes to mail a donation from anywhere in the state. In addition, in Covington, the Kentucky County Government Center will be accepting donations. Finally, we will be announcing a few additional locations in Lexington tomorrow. Please visit firstlady.ky.gov backslash toy drive for collection center addresses and hours, as well as the mailing address for Broadbent Arena. If your school, neighborhood, workplace, or another community group is already hosting its own, its own toy drive or wants to start one, this great news. Once you've collected toys, we are happy to help you get them to one of the 20 central locations listed to our website by this Saturday so we can handle transportation to Western Kentucky. A couple of things to remember. Please do not wrap the gifts as we need to know exactly what they are as we sort and organize them. 
you can donate wrapping paper, tags, bows, and more, which we will distribute to parents and guardians. We are not accepting clothing donations as part of this toy drive, but we do encourage you to seek out other organizations who are running clothing drives if you are interested in making those kinds of donations. Again, we will be collecting these gift items beginning tomorrow through Saturday the 18th. We will share information later this week about where our eligible Kentucky, excuse me, our eligible Western Kentucky families in need can go to pick up gifts. We anticipate pickup times will begin this weekend and early next week ahead of Christmas Eve. Last, but certainly not least, I want to thank our number one partner in this effort, <laughs> who I know can't wait to visit Kentucky soon, Santa Claus. Just like when we collected 2.4 million masks during coverings for kids, I know our people are going to come together to make Toys for Team Western Kentucky an incredible success. As Kentuckians, we come together when times are tough. We look out for each other, and no matter the challenges we face, we will get through it together. Merry Christmas, Kentucky. Let's make it special for these kids and families who have been through so much and show them that we're going to be with them every step of the way. All right, if uh, dealing with all this, and thank you. If dealing with all this isn't enough, uh, we have a pandemic. It's continuing, and it's continuing to take lives of Kentuckians. As an update, um, we every Monday we start um, with Saturday, Sunday, and Monday's numbers and go through some of the rest. 2,308 new cases on Saturday with 55 new deaths, with individuals as young as 38 uh, years old. Sunday, 989 new cases, 37 uh, new deaths. Uh, again, losing Kentuckians in their uh, 40s. 27-year-old uh, man in Laurel County, so as young as in their 20s. Today, Monday, 1,089 new cases, which is actually less than last Monday. Now, it may potentially be that we're getting fewer tests from different regions with everything going on. We'll have to wait and see. 28 uh, new deaths. Again, um, Kentuckians who are far too young uh, on that list. Our positivity rate today is down just a little bit from where it's been at 8.78%, still way too high, but we were above nine uh, and have now crept down a little bit. Uh, 1,253 Kentuckians in the hospital due to COVID, 315 in our ICUs, 181 fighting for their lives on a ventilator. All right, this uh, last week, we actually um, oh, almost exactly the same as the week before, if we can show the stair stepper chart, Five fewer cases um, last week than the week before at 15,082 uh, as compared to um, ultimately what was uh, 15, uh, I'm sorry, it's it's about 20 uh, uh, cases less than the, the week before. Uh, again, it always takes a week or two to see if this is a trend. We were having a definite escalation. You know, the, the three bars... Uh, from the back was Thanksgiving weekend. Um, so if that had been a regular week, we would have had an escalation every single week um, until two weeks ago. Um, we'll see what this means. Certainly we are uh, grateful that this week uh, had fewer cases than the week before. I think it's still too early uh, to determine if that might mean that um, uh, cases are um, stabilizing or plateauing because, um, as you'll see in a minute, hospitalizations, ICUs, and ventilator use all going up. Um, let's look at the positivity rate. Uh, actually, for the first time, and the positivity rate, you know, it shows, shows the continuous escalation uh, with the Thanksgiving week not interrupted because the, the positivity rate isn't just the raw number, it's the percentage of, of positive tests. Uh, down just a little bit last week versus the week before. If that holds, that is good news, but we are seeing um, the rest of the country um, escalate significantly. Um, now, not all the rest of the country had 
um, the, the huge surge that we most recently did, as you can see um, in that last surge that you know, is, is, is going to be one of the most deadly um, in our pandemic experience. Let's show the line graph for hospitalizations, definitely on the rise again. Of course, the, the last major peak you see there is when our hospitals were overwhelmed and we have not gotten back down to pre-surge um, from that last one and now on the rise again. Do not have hospitals sounding the alarm yet, but everybody is watching this very, very closely. Our hospital capacity is now probably a little bit less than it was during the surge, the number of beds we can staff. However, we have had the experience in expanding ICUs uh, and providing higher levels of care in places that normally do not do that. Uh, we have uh, now solidified uh, the connections between our nursing programs and these hospitals. I do believe uh, we will be better prepared uh, if these numbers continue to escalate. Kentuckians in the ICU uh, also uh, escalating. You know, the, the slight tick down happens normally at the end of every single weekend. We'll see where it goes uh, for the rest of the week. Uh, Kentuckians on a ventilator. Uh, also, uh, general trend uh, increasing. How about some good news? We've got a lot more people getting vaccinated. Um, we have wanted to see that. Um, our numbers always come in the highest over the weekends, but we have some of the better numbers uh, that we've had. Uh, 14,880 Kentuckians went in and got their first shot of hope. That means they decided to get vaccinated for the first time and got their first shot. 16,813 Kentuckians got their second shot to become fully vaccinated. And look at that next number. 46,373 got their booster shot. Remember, if it's been more than six months since your second shot of Pfizer or uh, Moderna or two months since J&J, &J, you need a booster. That's how we avoid another surge. Waning immunity is real. We'll show it to you in some numbers in, in just a second. Uh, make sure you get that booster shot. Not only does it give you the best shot against our enemy number one, which is the Delta variant, it looks like it's needed to protect you from Omicron. Um, we go through this by uh, every, every Monday by age demographic. Um, number one uh, uh, mark is total Kentuckians that have gotten at least one shot has gone up a percentage point. We celebrate every time that happens. So um, let's see, today is the 13th. Two days from now will be one year, no, tomorrow, will be one year from the very first vaccine given out in Kentucky. And in that span of time, one year, we vaccinated 62% of every man, woman, and child in the Commonwealth of Kentucky. That's incredible. It's not enough based on what we face. That's never been done in human history. I'm really proud of our folks who are out there giving those vaccines now up to 2,731,731 Kentuckians that have gotten vaccinated. Um, our total for those that are eligible, five and up, these are people that can actually get a vaccine. Stay in the same, about 65%, that's about two thirds. Um, and then total 18 and up, these are people who make their own healthcare decisions, 73%. Um, folks, people in the Commonwealth overwhelmingly, uh, know that they need to get vaccinated, and people keep coming to get vaccinated. Every day, we have at least a 1,000 Kentuckians who determine that it is time. Um, please, we're waiting for you. We want to see you. Uh, come in, get protected. Uh, As so we do the breakdown by age, um, 75 and up, unchanged, still at 91%. This is one we need to do better in. And 91%, you think, why would you need to do better than that? It's because they are at the most uh, at risk. 64, uh, 65 to 74, these are our all-stars at 95%. 50 to 64 has gone up a percent, now at 79%. 40 to 49, this creeps up almost every week. This is my group and a group that's getting hit really hard in deaths right now from Delta, up a percent. Then we're the same all the way down to 12 to 15, up a percent to 45, and five to 11-year-olds, up a percent to 14. Let me talk about that for a minute. It does appear that many parents are waiting 
um, on the, the 5 to 11-year-olds that just opened up. It is safe. It provides protection for your child. It is a smaller dose. They even package it uh, differently. My 11-year-old, our 11-year-old, Brittany and my 11-year-old, has gotten fully vaccinated now. I love her, um, both hers, um, more than life itself. And I would not have taken my own children to get vaccinated if I didn't not only believe, but know it is safe. Um, haven't done the, the racial demographics in a while. Um, uh, top lines is it breaks down to about 81% of, of vaccinations um, uh, white Kentuckians, about 7% black or African-American uh, Kentuckians. That's about 1% off the population numbers. But our other is still at about 10.1%, way above um, the, the, the census uh, for, for uh, any of our uh, breakdowns. So still needing to, to dive in, and it's hard to have the information to the other to get an accurate figure. Um, I actually um, imagine that that would get uh, us up closer uh, to the breakdown in population um, of all our Kentuckians. Um, let's show the vaccination status of COVID-19 cases, hospitalization, and deaths. This is through December 8th. We would have done this on Thursday. Um, again, 82% of cases unvaccinated or only partially vaccinated, 84.7% of hospitalizations, and 82.7% of deaths. This has all been impacted by waning immunity. All these numbers were at or close or above to 90%. If you go out and get your booster, those numbers will go back uh, to that place. Uh, but even uh, without factoring in boosters, um, when we look at the rate of COVID-19 cases and vaccinations, you are still at least four times more protected even right now with Delta and waning immunity if you have gotten vaccinated versus if you have not. All right, with that, we will open it up to questions. We have three journalists uh, here with us and more on the line. We'll start with Tom. Yes. There you go. Be kind. <laughs> what What are the age groups that uh, you uh, want to uh, yeah, emphasize as far as birth through eighteen? Um, you know that that's a huge range. So that's a lot of different types of presence, but every age was affected, and so we need to make sure that every child who has lost their home lost their family members, has something to be joyful about. Uh, Piper? Um, thank you, Governor. Um, I have this question. It's personal. Uh, I know you can talk about, but um, yeah. have you been able to check in with your family members and drop some spray and make sure that they are talking? Yeah, so... So the, 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 the family member I'm closest with in Dawson Springs is my, my cousin, um, Jenny, uh, took me, uh, it, it, there's a good ending to this story. It took me eight hours to get in touch with her, just calling over and over. There was, but I was in Dawson, there's no cell service. Uh, so, you know, I started calling at, at, at 1 a.m. because I'm sitting in the emergency operations center, hearing the report come in about how hard Dawson was hit and, and the likely dead. Um, not being able to get her, got to see her later that day because the moment it was safe to fly, we went first to, to Mayfield and then to Dawson, uh, got to give her a, a hug. Now, Muhlenberg County was hit really hard. Um, my uncle, um, who married my, my, my dad's sister, his whole family is from there and, um, a town was just obliterated. He lost two, uh, of, of his cousins, but, um, has been able to be in touch with his brother, uh, and and others. Um, we're heading to Muhlenberg tomorrow. The uh, lieutenant governor has already been there, but want to make sure they know that we stand with them. Um, but just, I mean, horrific loss. A uh, town like Dawson losing that many people in a, in a county like Hopkins is, I mean, it's, it's unimaginable. Um, when the president comes in, 
my understanding is um, he can make two stops, and those will be Mayfield and 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 Dawson Springs. Uh, Phil, we don't have Phil. Phil's in the hall. Um, he therefore forfeits its right to ask questions. Melissa Patrick. Yeah, <laughs> Melissa. Um, hi, Governor. Um, so, what are the primary health-related impacts from these tornadoes in Western Kentucky? And what uh, right now? What are the priorities of the Department of Public Health related to health? So, the the Department of Public Health, Dr. Stack, and others are are going to visit the local health departments to meet with them to address their their needs. We are ensuring that. Uh, the vaccination program is not interrupted or that others can come in and help. But as you know, our, 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 pub, our, our departments do everything from the HANDS program, which is an amazing program, to so many others. And we want to make sure that as many of the services that can continue, uh, continue especially at the, at the most difficult uh, times. Uh, there have been a lot of injuries that have been treated uh, on the on the the, the the physical health uh, side. I talked to the uh, head administrator of the Mayfield Hospital. You know, they're having to run uh, with water out of tanker trucks. And I'm working with FEMA and have asked FEMA uh, to, to, to help out uh, with that. Uh, he said they saw 80 people in the first uh, several hours. Um, and then I believe, though I don't have the details, that we've lost at least one person that had internal physical injuries that and was alive after the tornado, thought to be uh, okay, and has now uh, been lost. There's going to be a lot of health issues that come out of this. There is everything that is inside some of these older buildings that people were exposed to, and then there's there's the the, the trauma is um, is going to impact people who live there, their family members, the first responders. Those that have been down there trying to help, it it is very, very, very real. Um, and so we're going to need to uh, be vulnerable enough to admit that uh, this has really impacted our, our mental health um, as people even. And and then at the appropriate time to, to get the help uh, and to set an example. Uh, and I know people out there uh, want to help all of us process uh, everything that we are feeling. Debbie Yetter from the Courier Journal. Um, hi, Governor. Uh, I wanted to check and see, have you mentioned the um, injuries in Graves County? Are you all, is anyone attempting to, to try to uh, assess the overall injuries from the tornado and hospitalizations? Don't have that yet. Um, that may be something that we turn to uh, again, we're, 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 we got a fatality count that's going up every day, which means we're still, we're still finding people. Um, when, when, when there's an opportunity and, and capacity, we'll, we'll try to get from the hospital what, um, what we think we, we have. Um, I'm not aware, uh, right now of a number of individuals in critical condition or whether we have uh, individuals in, in critical condition. That's certainly something that we can and will reach out for. Uh, I've also talked to Connie Smith, who um, actually I believe the numbers I gave you from Mayfield uh, Hospital were, were from Bowling Green. My, my apologies. We're not a lot of sleep the last uh, three days. Um, Connie talked about the number of people coming in. Uh, that is certainly stabilized. Um, as you see in Bowling Green, I mean, whole families just um, no longer with us, including some of some of our younger uh, Kentuckians. Uh, uh, Jack Bramer, Herald Leader. Yes, Governor, a two-parter. Of the 74 deaths, how many of them have been identified? And do you have a dollar figure how much you expect uh, FEMA to help? So uh, I do not have an update since we moved from the 64 to 74 in the span of today. Uh, 69 of them are identified. So five uh, currently unidentified. And remember, the state police need you at the same ministry's location. If you are missing somebody, to come in with identification documents 
as well as provide a DNA sample if you are related. Did I miss the second question? Dollar figure. Um, once <clears throat> the disaster is approved, uh, everything that falls in it, FEMA covers at least 75%. So the overall amount, um, to my knowledge, isn't capped. It's going to be 75% of what we are able to provide to them. There's also the individual assistance, and that'll depend on the number of households. I, I don't have a number, but I imagine FEMA will, will be helping us to the tune of hundreds of millions of dollars uh, because that's, that's how much damage uh, that we have in the very, very least. Uh, John Boyle, WFPL. Hi, Governor. Um, I know with some of these towns, 3,000 people isn't exactly a huge population, but um, I also know that there are some Kentuckians that live in more rural parts of the state that may have been hit by this, uh, you know, maybe not densely populated neighborhoods. So I wanted to get a sense of, um, you know, are we still in the process of working our way out uh, to some of these people who may live a little bit more off the grid in the path of tornadoes? Yes. Um, the, the search starts in the most impacted area. Uh, we got an update yesterday um, the, where the actual line of the tornado is. Uh, they've done most of the, the search. Um, that would be if your house was hit directly by the very center uh, of this thing. And then they, they go out in a grid fashion. Um, but that's just the official search and rescue groups that are there. Uh, we also have county officials that are checking on people. Um, most of these communities are pretty small. Um, mayor of Benton's a, a, a wonderful mayor, um, just like the mayor of Mayfield and, and, and in Dawson Springs. But I was riding around with her looking at damage and, and, and John, she'd say, well, I texted this person. They're still stuck in their home, but they're okay. Uh, but they can't get down the hill. And, and so we've got a lot of people out there checking on a lot of people, but uh, yes, we are still uh, working our way out. And, and I'd only say it's, it's more rural areas if the, the line of the tornado wasn't in that part of the, uh, of the rural area. Uh, Karen Zar, WUKY. Governor, you and the First Lady have spoken openly about your faith at numerous press conferences since taking office. In the last few days, how has that faith guided you personally? And as a deacon, what were the messages that you brought to Kentuckians that you visited who've been devastated by this storm? Thank you. Well, I think that, I think that our faith teaches us that at times of great difficulty, you're supposed to love. Um, I've been telling people that I see <laughs> that I've never met that I love them. Um, and that's who we are as people. And, and I, I think I think people need that um, right now um, to, to, to try to listen. Um, give people a hug. It, uh, and, and then to let them know that we're going to be there with them, you know, each and every step uh, of the way. You know, my faith teaches me that our body is is just a vessel and that our soul is eternal. And I hope that provides some comfort to those that have lost um, even their children. As parents, we cannot imagine. Um, it was hard enough calling uh, Brittany and asking her to move the kids to the basement when we got hit. And when I made that call, I already knew that we had dozens of likely people dead um, throughout Kentucky. Um, I think empathy is what makes us good people. And um, let's make sure we continue to, to show it to, to one another. People are going to be hurting a long time. And it's an amazing thing to watch a church service being held in the shell of a church and, and, and listening to a minister, you know, on TV saying, you know, the church isn't the bricks. It's, it's you and me, wherever wherever two are gathered, um, and then watching just faith organizations of all types and of all religions that we have already seen do so much, uh, everything from um, our, our denomination, uh, Disciples of Christ, to, to in multiple situations, seeing the, the Church of Latter-day Saints and what they're doing, 
um, uh, a group of uh, Muslim doctors dropping off um, huge sets of, of, of supplies. It's, um, it's, it's, pr it's pretty special and we could not do this work uh, without a lot of faith-based organizations. All right, Nadia uh, Ramlagan uh, from Kentucky News Connection. Hi, Governor. I was wondering, uh, I understand that we're still in the early stages of the search and rescue process. Um, that being said, uh, do you have any idea um, what what might be the plan going forward for rebuilding? Is there going to be some kind of state agency or committee or coalition, coalition similar to the agricultural working group you mentioned that's going to make sure that the process is closely managed? Well, there's, there's a couple of really important things that are the next step in the process. Number one is all homeowners filing an insurance claim. If they have it, we are working on trying to get um, all our insurers uh, to these locations on a day uh, where we can direct um, these folks to make sure uh, that they can be helped all at one time. It's really important to get that done and to get it done as quickly as possible. People are going to need documentation. They're going to need to make lists of what is lost. And, and that is horribly traumatic to have to do. But it is necessary to, to, to try to get them those dollars that they are owed under those policies. Second, uh, FEMA. Um, we need to get people uh, to file their claim with FEMA for individual assistance. Uh, those are the people that are going to be walking around in the neighborhoods. We're going to try to publish a schedule once we hear back from Gracia Sheck uh, about when uh, different groups are going to be in what towns. Um, a lot of the rest of the schedule depends on debris removal. Now, in, in a little bit of hope, uh, we're not just clearing roads. We're now moving uh, stuff out, and that is a, a really good uh, thing. Uh, and then we're trying to address uh, any lag time right in between needing to make your claim, the debris removal being out, and then uh, rebuilding. We have lots of offers of, of help. One of the things we're really going to want to work through is, is how we maximize contractors uh, with materials uh, that can uh, be there helping to rebuild as quickly as uh, possible. Um, it's hard to look at where Dawson Springs is right now, but I'm trying to think about what it'll look like with hundreds of brand new houses. Um, that's gonna be a special day when we can see uh, that piece. Uh, construction um, will be uh, a little more uh, complicated with uh, government buildings, uh, with huge buildings, entirely wiped out churches and the rest. Um, we're also gonna have to start looking at businesses and especially small businesses that are hit. I know there's FEMA assistance, but um, we're, we're likely to provide some uh, direct assistance from the uh, Western uh, Team Western Kentucky uh, Relief Fund about helping to, to get them by until they can open uh, their doors again. Uh, we want to do everything we can uh, to help people get back up. I mean, it, you, you talk about getting knocked down. This is um, it's a lot harder than just getting knocked down. But uh, we're committed. Uh, we're seeing just amazing generosity by the people of the United States of America and other places. Uh, let me just say, if we feel your love, we feel your support. Um, calls come in uh, with such a volume that it's 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 hard to return them. But but thank you to each and every individual out there. I I got a note from Virginia's governor that I haven't been able to call back that they're doing a blood drive for us, um, and he's given blood personally. So. Uh, thank you uh, for that. Uh, we're getting support from everywhere from Amazon to the Backstreet Boys who are um, helping out with, I think, uh, a really uh, a huge uh, uh, help to the to the Team Western Kentucky Fund. Uh, keep it up. Uh, things like that. And if you can put the, the slide back up are how we ensure we don't just have support in the coming weeks, but a whole lot of expenses after natural disasters are months, maybe even a year out. I've already been talking to the county judges and, and we all agree that we got to make sure um, the way we plan to use these funds, which we are doing together, ensures that at that time that people need it, maybe that they are furnishing their house and 
How far out is that if you think about the fact that their house is still in rubble, that we are still here for them? Uh, so we got a lot of groups that are that are doing the immediate assistance and, and we thank them. Um, we're going to make sure that we coordinate to where we can continue the assistance for the months and even the years uh, to come. Uh, I know a lot of people out there want to help. Uh, they feel it very strongly. Um, we gave you a, a place to volunteer. Know that there are thousands of volunteers. And if your help isn't needed, don't take it badly. Just know that you're one of a whole bunch of amazing Kentuckians. So whether it's this or COVID, we'll get through it. We'll get through it together. Um, we will rebuild. We will get back up. That's what we do. Thank you all.